Good morning and God bless you on this Monday morning. Continuing our series, Can You Relate? Uh, we move out of the book of Genesis and we go into Exodus now. And today I'd like to talk for a moment about Pharaoh. And I'm going to call him Pharaoh the Older because in the book of Exodus it starts with one Pharaoh and then he don't, goes old and dies. And then the Pharaoh that interacts with Moses is the younger, the, the younger Pharaoh, his, his son. And I guess the theme I'd like to share, if you think of Exodus chapter 1, and I invite you to go ahead and read that in your Bible on your own, is, is that the people of Israel, the descendants of Jacob, have settled now in, in Egypt. And Joseph is the one who, by the wisdom God gave him, saved the whole nation of Egypt as well as saved his own family. And those first few pharaohs that remembered Joseph honored them and gave thanks for what Joseph did for their whole nation. But it begins, Genesis, or Exodus begins with, with the pharaoh forgetting the past. And that it says that he, Joseph meant nothing to him. And so somewhere along the way, from Joseph being the hero who saved a nation by his wisdom, uh, he's forgotten and neglected. And all of a sudden, these people who were such a blessing to the Egyptian people now become not only an opt opportunity for them to exploit as slave labor, but also a threat within. And they are concerned about how rapidly the Israelites are multiplying in numbers and they have no regard for them other than that they're, be, they're seen to be either used and exploited or as a potential threat. And I think about that theme, what happens when you forget your own history? Certainly as nations, I'd like to say, suggest three things. When we forget our history as a nation, we, we forget our sins. There's not a nation on this planet that has not sinned in its history that has not struggled with justice and oppression, with the haves and the have-nots, with an unfair treatment in courts or in the ability to get as help and assistance when needed. Our nation is no different than others in that regard. And if we fail to acknowledge that, if we fail to look back at our history and say honestly, these are times that we got it wrong. These are times that we have to learn from and grow. We run the risk of repeating those same mistakes over and over again. We also forget our national debts. When a nation forgets its history, they forget who helped them because rarely does a nation survive or come to power without allies, without people that have come to its aid and support, whether economically or militarily and we forget our values. If we forget our history, over time our values will adjust and adapt to new understandings and new circumstances. And it's very easy to forget who we are, what we stand for as a nation. The same pattern can happen for us as individuals as well when we forget our own history. And here's a balance. I'm not suggesting that as individuals that we live in the past, and maybe as a nation that we don't live solely in the past, always reflecting on our own history, but that we embrace our history as a nation or as an individual as a means of guiding us into the future. I think about what it means as if we forget our personal history. Second Peter, we hear in verse, chapter 1, verse 9, but whoever does not have these qualities is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. And there's a certain sense that we forget our sins if we forget about our past. We also forget our indebtedness. And of course, as Christians, our ultimate indebtedness is not to any human being on this planet right now. Our ultimate indebtedness is to Christ who is at the right hand of God. Christ who died for us and loved us and poured out his life for our sake. I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. At the very end of that chapter it says, You are not your own. You were bought at a price. 
And then when it comes to our values, you know, if we fail to remember our history, sometimes we forget our values. And values grow out of two things. Either wise, good people have implanted those values in us and modeled them for us and taught them to us as we were growing up, or we learn by hard experience from the mistakes of others and from our own mistakes that there are things that are truly wrong and hurtful and destructive, and there are things that are also good and life-giving for ourselves and for people around us. And that danger that we always need to remember our past so that we can always remember the values that we carry into the future. I think of Romans chapter 12, and I'm just going to read you the, the end of that chapter, uh, just a few verses from it. But the whole chapter is a wonderful reminder of this is who we are as Christians. This is how we are called to be. So starting in Romans 12, verse 14, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone beautiful values that at times in our nation's history and, and perhaps in your history and in mine, at times we've done a better job living that out than at other times. In our history, our story as a nation or as an individual helps to define us, not dwelling on the past and holding on to regrets and guilt and shame for things that we can't change or undo, but teaching us and guiding us to go forward, to learn from them so that we become better sons and daughters of God as we live in response to his amazing grace. So when I think of the story of Exodus and its very beginning, we're introduced to this character of Pharaoh who forgot his own history. May it never be so for us. May it never be so for our nation today. God bless you. Have a good day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.